Hi everyone, this is Marianne here, Revealing Light Tarot, Astrology and Spirituality. How are you? Wherever you are in the world when you're watching, a huge shout out to you. This is the second recording of this because I got about halfway through in the previous recording and I ran into technical difficulties. I hope I don't do that in this. Uh, this uh, show or this podcast, um, and I changed computers. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we're in the shadow of Mercury retrograde and you will get communication difficulties around Mercury retrogrades. Let's hope, fingers crossed, that we're going to be okay here. All right, so I want to do this video about the lunar eclipse in Libra on March the 25th at uh, 5 degrees and 7. The reason that I want to look at this is it's a particularly potent eclipse. All eclipses are potent. Uh, and then after the lunar eclipse follows on a solar eclipse on April the 8th. During eclipse times, you can often get shocking events, you can uh, shocking announcements. Um, the eclipses are very much aligned with leaders, world leaders, kings, um, and uh, we can expect to see some uh, events or announcements or news uh, that might uh, that might be dramatic in a way. Um, the lunar eclipse, as I said, is in Libra. In the south node, of course, is sitting alongside the moon at this time, the north node sitting alongside the sun. The north node is about our purpose and what we need to do in this life, our destiny, our purpose for being here. The south node is about uh, letting go of the old um, in order to reach our purpose. So if you think about a collective mindset, we're all doing a lot of thinking because we've got a whole bunch of planets in Pisces, which is in the subconscious realm, and Pisces rules the 12th or associated with the 12th house, Aries associated with the, fir with the first house in the zodiac. A lot of subconscious thinking around what? during this eclipse, around our relationships, our inner values will trigger who we want to be involved in, how much we want to be involved in, or do we actually need to let them go? And so this lunar eclipse is about endings, culminations. Uh, and so there's this subconscious thinking about our relationships um, and where we want to be in the future in relation to uh, to those relationships. Now, let me see, fingers crossed, if I can call up these charts. I think I can. Right. I think I know where I was going wrong. Okay. All right. Let's take a look. This is the chart of the lunar eclipse on the 25th of March, 3 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time um, over Washington. Now, I cast this over Washington in relation to where you are in 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 this eclipse, where wherever you're located, all these planets and ha and will stay the same. However, um, and and the aspects will stay the same. The houses will change. Over Washington, it's a very interesting um, picture that we're getting here. The um, I first I'll just look at this conglomeration, this stellium in Pisces over Washington in the second, the second house, which is associated with material uh, possessions, um, our finances, but also our inner values, our concepts and beliefs, and our and our worth. And so, given that all these planets here. <laughs> are in Pisces, there's a lot of subconscious inner kind of thinking going on in the Congress. The other uh, planets that I want to focus on here is the Sun, of course, and, and the North Node uh, in Aries, in the third house of communications. And the North Node, Purpose, Destiny, is sitting alongside Chiron, the wounded healer, and Mercury, the planet of communication. This is very much a, shining a spotlight on how we are communicating, how those in, uh, in, in the Congress are relating and communicating with each other, given that there are elements of the Republican Party in Congress who are doing some hard thinking about whether or not 
They want to be associated with the way that communication is handled or, or done in relation to the MAGA, the MAGA party. Where prominent members of MAGA think it's okay, members of Congress, to tell someone to F, a journalist to F off. The conspiracy theories and the the nonsense that we hear coming out and also the violent rhetoric as well. Now, the um, moon here over Washington, the eclipse, what happens in an eclipse is the sun uh, and and the moon are, uh, the, the sun is eclipsed by obviously the moon or the, and in between them is the earth. That's what happens in a lunar eclipse. So, Literally, they can't uh, they can't talk to one another. Um, the moon and the south node is in Libra up in the ninth house. The ninth house is learning. Um, what are they learning? It's also the law, the law and justice. And over con Congress, we've seen some very, uh, very, I guess, skating on thin ice in relation to putting forward um, key witnesses in impeachment inquiries that are uh, connected to Russian intelligence and are lying, fabricating evidence. There's a spotlight on that at the moment, and it is no, um, I guess, uh, it's no coincidence that many, uh, many Republicans or some Republicans in Congress are doing this, this thinking, this deep kind of thinking. Uh even, uh, I guess, re representatives like uh, Chip Roy, who uh, gave that infamous speech now about Republicans not doing it, being able to do anything in Congress. So about relationships. We see uh, here also uh, this icon that I'm hovering over now is uh, Hygieia the asteroid Hygieia. And uh, that's also in Pisces, alongside Neptune, conjunct with Neptune, almost, uh, almost exact. Neptune can be illusion and delusion. And then we have Saturn here in Pisces, knuckling down. Saturn will deal a, hard, a harsh blow. It sets boundaries. It's the great boundary setter. So not only are Republicans thinking about their relationships and their inner values being triggered if they're not, uh, they're not for chaos or they're not for um, gaslighting or violence. They're really having to take positions. It's really a line in the sand moment at this time. And that's all being triggered around this lunar eclipse. Are we going to hear another Republican resign from the House or the Senate? I have to say that this is not just confined to, to the uh, Congress in the US. The Republican uh, Republicans are holding primaries uh, across the states at the moment, and the big news coming out today is almost 200,000 people did not vote for the ex-president in, in his home state of Florida. Nearly 20% did not vote for him. This is a pattern. Now, Nikki Haley, Haley, who was contesting and has since dropped out of the race, was was had, had had done so well before this, so that you you know there's no excuses for this. Nearly two hundred thousand, hundred ninety seven thousand, said no, and a percentage of them around I think it's around ten percent won't vote for the ex president, and nine percent will not vote at all. How does that bode in a general election? In Kansas, nearly a quarter of registered Republicans did not vote for the ex-president. Nearly a quarter in Arizona, 21% in Ohio, 19% in Illinois, and 19% in, in, in Florida.
What does that say? This eclipse is triggering our inner values and our relationships. Who do we want to be associated with? What I call the ex-president, the ex-president, because many have, have literally broken up with him. For those logically predicting <laughs> the results of an election in 2024, we have this large percentage, well, really unheard of percentages against their, their own person who's on 91 felony charges, criminal charges, who can't pay half a billion dollars in a bond and so there's questions around his finances. Who wants to re-employ someone that was indicted and found uh, guilty of colluding uh, with the Russians? Much is coming to the surface at this time. Let's uh, take a look, speaking of, um, of Trump, let's take a look at... Trump and the eclipse. Okay, so for where's the action happening in this chart? It's happening in his seventh house, this Piscean subconscious hidden type realm. Connected with the collective, by the way. It's happening in his seventh house of open enemies. He can't find anyone to post a bond for him because he has a history of not paying back his debt. Vesta in his chart here. So this inner chart is, is the ex-president. The outer is the eclipse. I've said it over Palm Beach, Mar-a-Lago. We have Hygieia, the planet of the of illness, not planet, uh, the goddess of illness. Ill health is over Vesta in his chart. Vesta was the goddess of home and hearth. I just talked about what has occurred in the Florida Republican primary. Almost 200,000 Republicans saying no. Neptune, illusion and delusion sitting alongside Hygieia. I have a feeling, I've always felt that when he is on home soil in Mar-a-Lago with so many enablers and sycophants, he feels that he's got it all sewn up. But it's illusionary. And Saturn in Pisces here in his seventh house and Mars. There are some, he's got some, you know, there's some aggression here. He could, well, he could be uh, quite angry in his relationships at the moment. Quite angry. And there could be uh, people coming out, prominent people coming out that he thought were loyal to him that are no longer loyal to him. Saturn in Pisces will always set the boundaries. And this is occurring in his seventh house of relationships. Open enemies. The eclipse down here is happening in his second house. Second house is associated, as I've said, with material possessions, finances, but also inner values as well and worth. The moon is uh, alongside his Neptune in Libra. So look at look at what's hitting him. The south node conjunct with Juno in Libra. You could see difficulties uh, emerge in his marriage. Well, they're already there, but visible difficulties. News, impending divorce. Chiron is conjunct Juno in his natal chart and the south node is hitting 
that right now. South node meaning what do we need to let go of? A culmination, an ending is occurring in his second house. Jupiter in his second house, so much luck in the past, second house in money, for example. This is eclipses hitting him hard in the hip pocket. Donald Trump in his natal chart has Pluto, Mars and Regulus, regular, Regulus, I should say, in Leo. Regulus is a star system that is associated with royalty, fame, in the 12th house alongside Mars, very much wanting that and obtaining that in one way or another. Regulus is sitting alongside Ju Juno now in the first house, transiting Regulus and Juno in Virgo, the details. The details around women. And in my last video, I suggested that the governor, Florida, it's all happening in Florida, New York and Florida, the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, is uh, releasing the Epstein files. And uh, I wager here intuitively that the ex-president will be caught up in these in this fire in this information release. Many of you have said two ex-presidents, Clinton as well, probably. But I know that DeSantis is targeting Trump. Okay, so uh, not an easy time for him. I want to go up here to the eighth house. The eighth house is about death, endings, new beginnings, taxes, other people's money. It's a very heavy, heavy house, the end of something. Now, he has Hygieia. Remember I said Hygieia is associated with health in Aries. And Chiron is transiting Chiron is conjunct in the eighth house, in his eighth house, alongside of Mercury, the way he's communicating the sun and the north node hitting his health in other words this decline that we're seeing in his the way that he communicates his orator, oratory 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 the way that he delivers his speeches what he's saying the slurring of the words the the mixing up this is just as his star wanes as his downfall occurs this is only going to get worse. Trump was born with Algol in the ninth house or on his midheaven, around his midheaven. Algol is the head of Medusa. Medusa. Charles, King Charles was all, has also got Algol in his chart as well. Our goal is, uh, remember, per the myth of Perseus. He cut Medusa's head off in, uh, in, when he was on his quest. And so there is, uh, it's called the demon star. It's it's associated, you know, some, some even describe it as evil. I don't go that far. But it's very much associated with pain and suffering. Our goal is hitting his ninth house, his, his natal Algol. And we have Uranus and Jupiter there as well. Look at that transit. Things that he can't, that he can't anticipate. He's being hammered. And uh, this is, he's being hammered with pain and suffering. Why is that? Well, what pain and suffering has he caused others is the question. I just want to say that Regulus, the star of, you know, fame and royalty and it, if you use your position wisely and benignly, Regulus will bestow its gifts. If you don't, it will deliver karmic downfall. So I leave you to be the judge. 
going to be a bloodbath. KKK members are good people. Fight. Go to the capital. Fight. Who died on that day? A woman was crushed by the crowd trying to storm the, crushed and died, trying to storm the capital. Another woman trying to use a flagpole or whatever she was doing to break into the capital, break the window, was shot and died. A police officer was hit with flagpoles and fire hydrants and went home later that night and died. The autopsy said he didn't die from his wounds, but I wonder if that police officer would be alive today had January 6th not occurred. Several other police officers went home and unsubscribed from life. I wonder all of those people, well, I not wonder, I know all of those people would be alive today if it wasn't for January the 6th. Those committing gun violence in the name of Trump, those committing any violence in the name of Trump, threatening bloodbaths if he doesn't win the election. Is he using his fame wisely or not? <laughs> okay, let's look at, uh, I want to look at one more chart. For those that, um, I don't know, find astrology difficult, bear with me. Um, astrology gives us a big picture look. It's uh, People say, well, how can it be so accurate? Well, astrology began in before Christ. The ancient Babylonians were looking to the sky to uh, make decisions about when they planted cro uh, crops. Uh, the Egyptians looked to the skies to see when the Nile would flood. Uh, many used the skies as their compass. And, uh, and so predictions then were able to be made and that was handed down through the centuries. Very, very ancient, ancient, what would you call it? It's not divination. It's not science either. Meta metaphysical science perhaps. In China, around eclipse times, so eclipses were seen as uh, either good, they would study eclipses because they would want to know whether they were going to be good or bad for their emperor. And so that's why eclipses, lunar eclipses, can be associated with leaders and kings, world leaders and kings, and perhaps surprises around those subjects, literally. And so this is why I wanted to include King Charles III chart because I'm, I went to um, Astro Dienst. I got out of my uh, Astro Gold program for this because I wanted to see very, I want, wanted you to see very clearly the green lines in this chart I'm going to show you. This is King Charles III, and uh, this is the inner is King Charles III, and the outer are the uh, transits which... Uh, are set for the 25th of March, the eclipse over London. Now, I wanted you to see this because these green lines are what we call in astrology inconjuncts. Inconjuncts. What are inconjuncts? Well, <laughs> never the twain shall meet. More than difficult uh, aspects, they are sometimes unsolvable. And so when you see an in, in conjunct in your in your chart, these green lines, or they sometimes well they're referred to as quincunxes, but in conjuncts, there's not a blending of energies. There's not a way to uh, work through these challenges. It is what it is, and you see during the eclipse, this is hitting King Charles very very hard. It's almost as though there are no way, there's no way through for him in many of the challenges that he currently has as a monarch. The uh, lunar eclipse here uh, is hitting his third house of communication. And there is an inconjunct right up to his natal moon. He was born on an eclipse. 
and the north node there. In the 10th house, public. He can't, he couldn't, he can't resume his duties and communication is a big part of that. People in the UK have this, have a very close relationship with their monarchy. It's been so much a part of their life. The Queen, the late Queen Elizabeth, always there. And now what has happened, King Charles can't be, literally can't be the monarch. Yes, I know he's he's talking privately and he's talking to people over Zoom, but the man is undergoing chemo treatment. Not, oh, that was a Freudian slip, cancer treatment. What do I think that includes? Chemo and most likely radiation. He's lost a lot of weight. This is hard, harsh treatment, and he can't be the monarch that he wants to be. Meanwhile, his son and daughter-in-law are also offline. The Princess of Wales, Prince and Princess of Wales, Princess of Wales due to uh, serious health concerns. And I'm not even going to go into, into that other than to say that there's a huge vacuum at the moment in the monarchy and people are confused and saddened. Prince Andrew and the Duchess uh, Sarah Ferguson, Duchess of York Sarah Ferguson, led the official royal representation into uh, a huge royal event recently. Prince Andrew and the Duchess of York were leading the royal family at that time. There's no easy way here, no easy way at all. His uh, north node is in conjunct his son, his, his transiting son. This is not just a fated time for him. It is probably the biggest along with his his mother's passing watershed moment in his life he's doing a lot of inner thinking about his relationships too when i say relationships relationships to the people he must be thinking how can i go on as a monarch with such grave health outcomes. He has Mars, Saturn, Venus, which can soften, soften the blow, so to speak in Pisces along with Neptune. But Mars is in his eighth house, the eighth house, as you know, endings, transformation, can also be death. I'm not saying he's going to die, but he's working hard, as all cancer warriors do, to live. And that transiting Mars is opposite his natal Saturn in the second house. He's having to work hard to go on in the way that people expect him to. And he's currently thinking, can I? Can I go on in the way that my that the people want me or expect me to? Do I want to? Because this is a life-changing event for him. No easy answers for King Charles III at this time at all. Things he won't, can't solve. And even that in itself can force change that you may not necessarily want. So lunar eclipse, good or bad, for King Charles, this is a very, very troubling, challenging time. For the ex-president of the US, same. Extremely difficult eclipse. Okay, so uh, one of the, let's move to the tarot. One of the um, big
big questions at this time is can the ex-president find the bond to appeal the decision in his business fraud litigation case, civil case? If he can't, I think it's by Monday, they can start seizing, or they might already be able to start seizing assets. He can't. His lawyers have already said he can't find the money. So is anything miraculous going to happen? Will he be able to come up with the money? Will he be is asked to appeal without lodging the bond? All right, so let's ask that. Will the courts allow Trump to appeal or the ex-president? Will the, I should say ex-president, will the uh, courts, New York courts, appeals court, allow the ex-president to appeal without a bond? Yes or no? The Eight of Pentacles work trying to get that bond and then the, the high priestess secrets, something hidden around his money. <laughs> the Knight of Pentacles at the foundation, consistency. The Eight of Swords, restriction in the past. The Five of Wands, obstacles, challenges, trying to turn this into a partisan show. It's not. It's a legal process. The Ten of Pentacles, the Trump Organization, his money. The Page of Swords, something emerging, a light bulb moment, a truth emerging. The atmosphere around the Queen of Wands. Are there females on that appeals court moving forward with a plan? The magician in the hopes and fears that can be manifestation can also be manipulation. And the outcome is the Ten of Swords, complete and utter downfall. No, they're not going to allow him to do that. And for those that keep viewing my downfall for the ex-president in 2024, I remind you that this, this came up time and time and time again. And I said he had monetary issues, problems. The Ten of Swords is the outcome, clarified by the Queen of Swords. No, this is objectivity, the law. Nothing is going to change. They're not going to make, I don't think they're going to make an exception. And we get the world card endings and beginnings and the Seven of Wands defending oneself and justice. So this is... You know, this is going to be very volatile. Um, the Ten of Swords is is a no card, so I'm going to go. I'm going to say that they're not going to allow him to appeal without uh, without that bond, even if they reduce the bond, for example. I don't think they can make an exception for him. Okay, the other legal. Uh, case I want to look at is the criminal case this time in New York under Judge uh, Wan, I think he's Michonne, Judge Michonne. This judge is not, not taking any, he's just straight down the line, no nonsense. I want to know, will this case, it looks like it will, will this case, I've said it will, will this case proceed before the election? Will the New York uh, election interference business fraud case, Stormy Daniels case, however you want to refer to it, will it go ahead before the election? Now, I've seen there will be a conviction too. So we have the Knight of Wands. So, yes, there's very, uh, this judge is moving very, very quickly. And the hanged man, okay, so pausing. Uh, they want to pause it. Uh, that's They'll, they'll throw as many spanners into the works as they possibly can. But these are the signifier cards showing that it was paused. The pace of that trial was paused. We get the five of cups. We get loss, three cups lost, two remaining. It's the minor death card, minor arcana death card. The nine of wands in the past boundaries and saying no putting boundaries around something. Now we have the moon here. You can expect further 
when I say shenanigans, further attempts by the Trump uh, ex-president's lawyers to delay, delay, delay. There are things coming to the surface in this case as well. What's in that new evidence that we need to see? Now, the immediate future is moderation um, and compromise, but also uh, temperance. This judge will do everything he can to uh, lower the rhetoric, lower the the tone. And so I'm not sure if he's been successful with his gag orders, but I think he will be in the longer term. We have the five of wands in the current, uh, in, or in the present here. Five of wands is uh, obstacles, challenges, partisanship, fighting. But we have the law, the steady hand of the law here in the environment around in New York. That's the also the Attorney General there as well. This is a, she is a formidable foe. We have here the hopes and fears, the world card, endings, major endings and beginnings, and we have justice absolutely as the outcome card. No, no doubt, I have no doubt in my mind that that trial will go before the election. He's going to try and delay it, obviously, but he's just not going to be successful. The ace of swords, the truth emerging. Look at that. Look at that in relation to our astrology. Now, the he there's a hearing on the 25th of March. Michonne, Judge Michonne is getting both the DA and the uh, ex-president's lawyers to talk about a timeline on the 25th of March. There will be no long-term delays. This is a trial that will be held before the election. Okay, justice will be done, certainly in that New York case. Okay, I want to go to the Florida case. Remember, I keep getting the image of, of the current judge there, current judge there, pouring sand into uh, the gears. So uh, she her rulings are, I feel Smith is just on the, just on the verge of appealing her decisions and asking for a recusal. So let's have a look. Will Smith, many lawyers think she's trying to set up a double jeopardy situation for the ex-president to have the trial dismissed. So I think it's for Smith enough is enough. Uh, let's see, will he appeal? Will he appeal her decisions? Will Smith appeal her or go straight and ask for a recusal? Um, all right, so will he appeal her decisions? So the four of cups, three cups lost, two remaining. Disappointment. And then we get the chariot quick action. Looks like he's uh, to overcome his disappointment in her judgments. Looks like she will. He will. Uh, and we have here the six of pentacles giving and receiving help. He's, he's arguing that she's helping the, the president. Whatever legal way you want to do that. He'd always planned this. I saw this a long time ago. The two of swords, crossroads, time. And then we get the king of wands. Yeah, clarified by uh, the five of cups. So he's going to argue. He's going to appeal it. We'll keep going. Uh, boundaries, setting boundaries. Um, look at that. A loss. And then the setting of boundaries. He wants to set some boundaries here. Hopes and fears, moderation, away from partisanship, and the Nine of Swords, a great deal of anxiety, Page of Wands, moving forward, uh, and then we get the Queen of Wands. Is he going to appeal it? Absolutely, the Hierophant. Um, these, I guess he's got a strategy um, around, you know, if he appeals, then it can that just keeps going to higher courts. I think he has a strategy of perhaps rolling an appeal and a request for recusal in. Let's see if that's the case. All right. These cards are, I don't use them often. It's the myth mythical tarot and they're stiff. Let's give it another, another chuckle. Okay. Let's see. Will uh, Will Smith 
moved to recuse, will Smith move to recuse Judge Cannon from the case or what, request a recusal from the case? Will Smith request a recusal? Like ammunition and, and piling up these things, seven of swords, lies and deceit, and then we get the page of wands, yeah. So there's something here that is, he's going to say, might have been blatantly deceptive. Wow. Um, the Queen of Wands is at the is at the base of this uh, foundation of this reading. Page of Cups, surprises, bombshells in the past. We get moderation. It's feeling like he's going to. And then we get the Tower. Oh, my God. This is going to blow up this Florida case. New starts, absolutely. He wants he wants a new judge. Ten of Swords, downfall, complete and utter downfall in the environment. Hopes and fears, the Hierophant. I don't think he wanted to do this. There's that anxiety uh, outcome again, sort of being um, loss here. And then uh, the Empress card, a period of time. This is bad outcomes here. Um Knight of Cups and the Star Hope. I think he really did want to work with her, but I just don't think he can. Uh, is he going to? I'm not sure. Does he ask for a recusal or does she? Does he appeal it? There's a strategy here, appeal her decisions and then she stands down because there seems to be some kind of deceit here. I have read she voluntarily, voluntarily steps down. Okay, so is this the case? Does she voluntarily step down because of his appeal? He's got some kind of plan. And we get the hanged man pausing. M manipulation, yeah. It's, I think, abuse of power. Oh, my God. I think it is an appeal which out of it she gets, she gets kicked around legally so much by an appeals court that it's unviable for her to keep going with it. Page of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, King of Cups, Five of Wands. Yeah, partisanship. It's what she's, it's an abuse of power and the Eight of Wands. It, this is going to break open fairly quickly now, I feel. Okay, um, one last, uh, one last reading given that I did, I did um, look at King Charles III. I have thought. I did a reading on his coronation. I said I I think he's not well. He will have some ill health. And I thought Queen Camilla will too. And in that chart, he's very much thinking about, about her and her health. So will King Charles step down? I don't think it's an announcement coming soon, but is it the ultimately where we're heading to? Will King Charles step down? Will King Charles, given his health issues, step down? Very uncertain time, Cancer. Six of Swords, moving on, moving out of troubled waters. The past, wow, a healing in the past. Something very metaphysical about this. Um, a very spiritual, I'm feeling, about this particular time for him. The King of Pentacles, the King, literally, of of pentacles the knight of wands in the past being able to move quickly in the past and justice crowning this reading justice the moon is in libra the moon in the south node in libra the sign of justice if, if you want to sum up a and this lunar eclipse you can see balance and truth and karmic justice as well. The Ace of Swords in the immediate future. We're going to get clarity and truth coming out of the palace. They are still making, they're at a crossroads, the Two of Swords. They're still making decisions. The Ace of Pentacles, new starts. Can they Can they keep going? Can they de keep delivering in the way that they have? The Three of Swords in the hopes and fears, loss. And the Empress card, the Empress card as the outcome of season of time. It's a yes, Major Arcana. Yes, he will step down, not immediately. And we get the Five of Cups, which is the minor death card. I'm not saying that he's going to die, but it can be uh, 
un unimaginable grief. The Ace of Cups, new starts. It's an ending and a uh, new beginning coming. We have the end at the base of, base of the pack. As I said, he's not going to, I'm not predicting, well, it, we all die. But there's an ending, a very, very clear ending here. Healing and the Queen of Wands and the Knight of Swords. He's also very concerned about his wife, as I said. Um, and and Princess Catherine as well, um, because William and Catherine would then have to step up. And that is that situation itself is still so confusing and so uncertain. All right, the eclipse. In summary, some of you want to know, want to look at summaries. The Republicans are soul searching. Many are deciding to break with MAGA. Many are deciding and acting on that. A terrible time for the ex-president. It's all hitting him, uh, including Algol, the head of Medusa, Medusa pain and suffering, uh, the demon star, hitting his Algol, his native Algol, along with unpredictable uh, lightning changes, Uranus and Jupiter expanding the, that uncertainty for him. He is taking multiple, multiple, multiple hits. King Charles, very, very, very difficult time. He can't solve this. He literally can't solve it. And sometimes cancer comes upon us, I know, because I'm a cancer survivor, comes upon us to present these situations to us. And we have to let go. We have to let go of what we held dear. It's about endings and trying to find those new beginnings in some way. I know this is a long reading, but it is what it is, what it is, what it is. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'll be back with some tarot. Also, if, if there's the occasional misspeak in this, um, in this uh, video, be kind it's a misspeak. I've misspoken. I've delivered a lot of information. I'm not going to be 100% right. Um, but there you have it. That's my uh, clips reading for you. Bye for now. Thank you.